Happy Pride Month everyone, and on book break we wanted to make this a really celebratory video. I know what I'm always looking for in books is joyful representations of queer lives and stories with happy endings and where preferably nobody dies. And some of my favourite LGBTQIA plus books have been very very sad, but there are happy stories to tell too, and this video focuses on those. As always, we would love to hear your recommendations, so do leave a comment below with your favourites. I've got a pretty long list in this video today because I know this is something that so many of us are so often looking for, and I wanted to make sure that I had a good long list that reflected lots of different experiences. For my first one, this list is mostly going to be fiction, but I wanted to start with at least one non-fiction recommendation, because Jazz Jennings is a great example of someone with such a wonderful, inspiring story. So the first book I'm recommending is her autobiography, Being Jazz. So this is her memoir of life as a trans teenager. Her family supported her transition when she was five years old, which was very controversial at the time, and they did receive a lot of backlash. So Jazz's story does include that pain and that struggle, but it is a wonderful and inspiring story of a young girl going through this with the full support of her family and all the ways in which they stood together to stand up for her right to be who she really is. And then moving into fiction, but starting with something a bit unusual, Mostly Void, Partially Stars by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner is actually transcripts of their Welcome to Night Vale podcast, but with some behind the scenes commentary and new illustrations. So Welcome to Night Vale is a fictional podcast, but it's presented as if it's a radio show of this small town with its rather strange supernatural goings on. It's quite Twin Peaks-esque. And Mostly Void, Partially Stars, the book, is a great way to get into the story if maybe you're not a big podcast person, or you loved the podcast but want to get even further into this story. And the story itself, I won't ruin for you, it's a whole supernatural adventure, but throughout the story, our main character, Cecil, we do get this slow burn romance with his boyfriend, Carlos, which is really lovely. Something that makes me so happy these days is coming across so many joyful representations of LGBTQ relationships in YA and middle grade books. I think it's so important and wonderful for young people to be growing up with these stories represented. So one wonderful example of this is Boy Meets Hamster by Birdie Milano. So this one's about a 14 year old boy whose family go on a holiday to a caravan park, which he is not thrilled about at all until he gets a massive crush on the boy in the next caravan over. And this one also has a really lovely supportive family dynamic, which is just so great to read about in books. And then for a series, the Sidekick Squad series by C.B. Lee is so much fun. So starting with the first book, Not Your Sidekick, this is a teen superhero series. It's quite sky high-esque, set in a world where superheroes are the norm. So in this first book, our main character is Jessica Tran, who is a bisexual, biracial girl with a very impressive superhero lineage in her family, but seemingly no powers of her own. And the story is partly just super relatable. She's trying to beef up her college applications, so she ends up getting this internship. But in her alternate universe, this internship happens to be with the town's supervillain, and she ends up uncovering this whole conspiracy. And then each book in the series follows a different character from their friendship group. And there's a great representation of so many different identities. So the second book is about Bells, who was a black trans boy. And then the third book is about his Latina love interest, Emma, and they all get these really badass storylines and it's just a lot of fun. Next, if you're looking for a fun summer romance read, Let's Talk About Love by Claire Khan is about a main character called Alice who is biromantic and asexual and her girlfriend has just broken up with her because of this. So we follow her over the course of a whole summer as she navigates understanding her identity also trying to figure out what she wants to do with her career, and then also her friendship with a boy called Takumi, who she meets through working at her local library. And this, you may guess, is a friendship that might just blossom into something else. So this is a really sweet, happy, heartwarming book. Plus, there are loads of descriptions of food, which always makes a book even better. The Carry On series by Rainbow Rowell is so popular that I'm sure you've already heard of it, but I had to mention it here. So this is a fantasy series about a wizard called Simon who shares a room at his magical boarding school with a vampire called Baz, and they are arch enemies, 
but let me just tell you that fans of the enemies to lovers trope will enjoy this book. And if you've already read Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, you might recognise these characters as appearing in the fan fiction stories that Kath writes in that book, but if you haven't read Fangirl, it's fine, this series stands on its own. When Katie Met Cassidy by Camille Perry is a really fun will they won't they romance, which I always think are irresistible, between two women who meet through work. So Katie has just been dumped by her boyfriend and feels like her whole life has just been swept out from underneath her and she doesn't know what to do and then she meets Cassidy. And they are two very different people which really opens Katie's eyes to a whole different way of living her life and the book is really about women being given the chance to figure out what they want and going after it. Now Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera is a book I loved and it felt like such a good education on white feminism. So our main character, Juliet, is a Puerto Rican college student who's just come out to her family as a lesbian, which was very difficult, and now she's off to Oregon for an internship there with her feminist hero, Harlow Brisbane, who's this writer who Juliet idolises. But when she gets there, Juliet ends up joining this larger queer community who really help her find the words for some of the things she's been feeling, including her realisation that Harlow Brisbane's feminism is actually quite limited to white women. So it's about her finding this better, more inclusive feminism to live her life by. Now for something very different, Barely a Lady by Cassandra Kaur is a fantasy paranormal romance about a bisexual werebear, yes, that's like a werewolf, but a bear, with a vampire roommate and an awkward love triangle going on between a werewolf, who she's known since high school, and a fae prince she's just met. But then her love triangle gets even more complicated when she realises that maybe her true love all along was the woman who she sits next to at work every day. So as you can tell from that description, this book is completely wild and very funny. It makes a lot of good-natured fun of Twilight and Fifty Shades of Grey, but it's set in London, so add in some awkward British mannerisms into the mix. Now I wanted to put a graphic novel in here as well, so On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden is a really sweet found family story about a young woman called Mia who joins this intergalactic space crew who go through restoring historic buildings through space, so it's a really fun sci-fi story. And the crew consists of a married couple of two women, one of their nieces, a non-binary person and now Mia but it turns out that Mia also has an ulterior motive for joining the crew. She is trying to track down her long-lost love, who is a girl she fell in love with back at boarding school. Now, in Coffee Boy by Austin Chant, instead of a love triangle, we have more of a love chain. So our main character, Kieran, is a trans man who's just got the internship of his dreams working for a political campaign, but he develops a crush on the rather prim and proper campaign strategist, Seth, who in turn has a crush on their boss, who has a fiancé and a child and is very, very straight, so that is never going to work. But it's this really cute summer romance, it's got own voices representation, and lots of conversations come up throughout the book about gender and sexuality that feel really natural in the dialogue, so it's very heartwarming. And then before I move on to telling you three final books to add to your wish list that aren't out yet, I did just want to mention the picture book Alfred and Albert by Morag Hood, which is a completely adorable love story between two aardvarks. And again, I just think it's wonderful and so exciting to be living in a time when children can be raised with so many joyful representations of different kinds of love. But don't go yet, because I've got three fab books for you to add to your wish list. Coming out early next year is Love is for Losers by Vibka Brueggemann, which is a wonderful story about a teenage girl called Phoebe who thinks that love is for losers. Her best friend just got her first boyfriend and seems to have completely changed her personality. And Phoebe just wants to focus on getting through her GCSEs and coping with the fact that her mum is currently working as a doctor overseas in Syria and Phoebe is really worried about her. So she gets this job volunteering at a charity shop where she meets a lovely group of friends including a rather special girl called Emma. And then later this summer, we are getting Boy Queen by George Lester, who you may recognise as a booktuber. He is wonderful, we love him, I will link to his booktube channel below. This book is about a teenage boy who doesn't know what to do after leaving school and being rejected for the drama schools he had applied for, 
before realising that maybe a path as a drag queen might be a perfect fit for him. And then also coming later this summer is Melt My Heart by Bethany Rutter, which has a bi main character and also is a lot about body positivity. So Bethany Rutter is a body positive activist and this book is about a main character who very much loves their body. And it's also a very sweet summer romance that's also about friendship and sisters and all my favourite things. So I would love to hear from you. Please do leave your recommendations below of all your favourite happy LGBTQIA plus stories. Particularly I'm aware that I don't on this list have any representation of intersex stories. I have read some wonderful intersex stories but I thought that they were a little too sad for this particular list. So I would love to hear from you if you have any suggestions. And I have also put together a playlist here for you to browse through of all of our other videos that celebrate LGBTQIA plus stories. See you next time.